I always do on my birthday is I always say a prayer for my parents. If I get to speak to them, which I do, I thank them. And a few years ago, I started this habit of on your birthday, I'll rather call your father, your mother, to congratulate them. My name is Simon Kaheru. I'm a Ugandan communications professional and to copy the words of my father, I am a father of three children, a husband and a son to my parents. And I, I say that because my father a few years ago started asking us, guys, do you know what I do for a living? And we'd all say, you're an accountant, you're a farmer. And he said, no, 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 no. I am a husband of my wife, father of my children, grandfather of my grandchildren, and I am a parent. And for the last so many years, that's what he does for a living. Which sounds odd, but I um, should tell you the focus of what I'm going to talk about today. Jofin is the love of my life. I hope you didn't watch this because then I'm going to be blackmailed forever. You know? She's my friend. We've been together for a very long time and we're going to be together for much longer. I have no qualms about that because I behave myself most of the time. Uh, we met when we were young, children really, but uh, old enough to have conversations that adults would understand. And we dated a bit and decided to live together forever, which we're still doing now. We've got three children. We've gone through a number of ups and downs, more ups and downs, which is yeah, great. And she's the most anxious person that I've ever met, the most worrisome person I've ever met. Kind of like my mom, so I think it's a trait that all women have. Very, very ugly. Yeah. And best forgotten, to be honest. But it involves the silly things that young men do, the daft things that old men do. I've not yet gone into my midlife crisis, so I know she's on her toes waiting for that to happen. It's not going to happen, don't worry. But it's, it's one of those things that everybody goes through, I'm told. In Uganda, it would be unbecoming of anybody to show that they are going through a midlife crisis. So let's not even talk about that yet. I always try not to pick just the one, but um, thinking about that question, I think today I'd, I'd really focus it on the power of family. Yeah, the power of family. All through my life, I think the one thing that has remained consistently important to me is family, the power of family. And it's, it's I've, I've made it the most important thing for me because of what I've seen coming before me, my grandfather, my parents, ourselves, siblings, and my wife and I, her family as well, and the impact they've had on her, and then what we need to pass on to our children. But then even more importantly is the impact on the entire nation and even continent if we all focus on family. Uh, I was saying a few minutes ago that if everybody did everything while thinking about, is this good for my family? Will this harm my family? Then across this continent, we won't have all the nonsense that Africa is normally associated with. And in our individual countries, we'll have much less of that, you know, crime and corruption. And just to give you a simple example, if, if you're cooking a meal for your children, you're going to pick the very best ingredients. You're going to do your utmost to make sure that this meal tastes good for them. You're going to make sure it's healthy. If you're just making a sandwich and a slice of bread drops on the floor, you pick up that slice of bread, but then you're going to think, was I in the toilet a few minutes ago wearing these shoes? If yes, then I'm not giving my daughter this slice of bread. Now, just escalate that thought process to everything else that you might be doing. If you're a politician, how are you going to make your political decisions? Are, are they good for your daughter, for your mother? Sometimes it even boils down to as simple a thing as, what would my father think? if he knew I was doing this. Uh, throughout my life, I've always had, for instance, that thought, even now, there are certain things I will not do if I'm going to meet my father in the next five, 10 minutes. Why? Because that's my father. I grew up seeing him sacrifice everything for me. Same as, that's my mother. She went through a hell of a lot to keep me alive, to get me to where I am now. I celebrated my birthday a few days ago um, I never declare when my birthday is, so don't tell anyone. 
but it's on. And uh, what what I always do on my birthday is I always say a prayer for my parents. If I get to speak to them, which I do, I thank them. And a few years ago, I started this habit of on your birthday, I'll rather call your father, your mother, to congratulate them, because. Me celebrating my birthday, not an achievement, I just continued being there, you know? But then for my parents, that's an achievement. They'll wake up and say, he's now 45 years old. I've brought him up to that level. Which is what I do whenever my children are celebrating their birthdays. My wife and I will sit down and have our own private celebration. See how far God has brought us. See, we did this. When it comes to my parents, for instance, at a very early age, I discovered why we lived the way we did as children. We, our family is Christian. We have very strong Christian values. And we've been a Christian family for generations, right from my great grandfather, my grandfather, and of course my parents. Now my, I once asked, you know, why? Why are we so staunch? Because our Christianity was different from what everybody else had. My parents were born again, but they were not these Pentecostal born again type of people, no. Their fellowship is, uh, in, in Uganda, they're called the Bazukufu, yeah? So that it's the reawakened faith. It, it's it's a, a, a movement that went through East Africa. This is when the Christian groups felt we are not devoted enough. We need to go back to the old faith. Let's be reawakened. And so they're a bit more strict, let's say, than many other um, Christian groups or Christian sects. For instance, they won't allow any of the members of the church, of the following, to grow their hair long, because that makes you vain and you start focusing on the worldly things rather than on the godly things. You don't wear jewelry, you don't, there's so many of those rules, which were a little bit irritating, but I grew up seeing them and there was no problem. But then there were other rules that started you know, raising questions in us as we were growing up. And one day I asked my dad, why? Why are you guys in this particular fellowship? And he told me the story of how he got saved. And that's when it really struck me that, you know, family, that's really what's important. Every year I think about this story because of what it means for me, but also what it meant to him. I was three years old and I fell very, very sick. Firstborn child, of course, them being a very excited couple in love, this was the best thing ever that happened to them. I think it still is. Uh, and they, when they watch this, they'll confirm it. Um, so I was hospitalized and everybody felt I was going to die. And my father, you know, in that hospital room, worried to death, said a prayer and did, made a deal with God. If you let this boy live, I'm giving my life to you. Now you've got to understand these were the 70s, so you can calculate how old I am. Um, and Uganda was a difficult country, but he was doing well. He was earning good money, he was enjoying his life. Enjoying his life, Kampala is the party capital of Africa, everybody knows this, and it was even way back then. Him dedicating his life to God, getting saved, was him changing very many things that mattered to him. It meant him dropping friends, for instance. It meant him dropping a certain lifestyle. But even more importantly, it meant that he had to change the way he was doing business, the way he was working. And we felt that all through our lives, to this very day. For instance, we grew up watching our parents working very hard to you know, pay our school fees and put food on the table. And when we compare what we were going through with what our friends, our peers were going through, it didn't make sense. I mean. Why, why, why does so-and-so's father drive a Mercedes-Benz and why is he capable of buying, you know, so many nice pairs of jeans and shoes and how come they pay their school fees on time and then you've got to pay school fees in bits and pieces every month, yet you are a businessman, same as them. And I remember my dad once telling me, it's because I'm not ready to bribe a customs officer to let my goods come in. I'm a Christian. I said, okay, so you sacrifice a good life to God because I was going to die. Hmm. And that always had me thinking. So even the times I'd be uncomfortable 
regardless of what it was, you know, I'm not happy with what's on the table. I'm not happy with the pair of trousers I'm wearing. I'd always remember that this is because my father sacrificed a certain lifestyle for me. So of course, when I became a parent, I had to carry that on. I, I try my best to sacrifice for the kids. It may not be as difficult, but sometimes it is real sacrifice. And I don't really let them know because they will get to know. My wife does the same. She was raised, and I'm very lucky um, having met her, which is a whole, a whole other story, but she grew up more or less the same. Different Christianity, but family values, very, very strong. And we always feel that if we can get our children to pick up exactly the same values, then down the generations, we'll be doing just fine. Um, are we allowed four letter words here? We love well. Uganda, Uganda is the most welcoming country on this continent. You know, African cultures are all, they are, they are more or less the same. We are, we are accommodating, we are welcoming. All of us in Africa, we are nice people, but this is the heart of that niceness. I just said a few minutes ago, this is the party capital of Africa. It's not a joke. Our capital city never closes, but neither does any other town in this country. We are friendly, entertainment oriented. We are also inefficient in a very amusing manner. I mean, we're always ranting and raving. I run a blog where I spend all my time telling guys, guys, you can do better. But I always find it entertaining to see the things that we get wrong. Sometimes it's really wrong. And one of the things that we need to understand as a country is we've got to fix this stuff. And I know it's not going to be a political fix because this is not the 1960s and we're not going to be radical Marxists or whatever the case might be. It's got to be something that comes from within us. And that's why I keep talking about family because at the end of the day, even the very worst characters that we have in this country or on this continent, they all have a family. They all have a relative. Many of them you find have departed from what they really believe in, what they really feel, because they've let go of that anchor. I call it an anchor because if you don't have a place to go back to, then you have nothing to lose. Friday morning at around about 6 a.m. So we've started, um, <clears throat> my daughter, my firstborn, 17, Muzima, asked to do Taekwondo. So I tried to get her a training session because the other children go for swimming and my wife goes to the gym at the same time, but I couldn't get a trainer for her at that time. When I eventually got a trainer, the only time that he could accommodate was early in the morning. So I then decided, okay, this gives us good family time together. So we've started waking up at 4.45 a.m. and we do exercise with this Taekwondo trainer and Taekwondo training for all of us in the family, the five of us. And it's really, for me, one of the best times of the day because our work schedules have stopped us getting together. So at, um, on Friday morning, it, it's, been, it's been grueling, I can tell you. No one wants to wake up at 4.45, except me, apparently, which surprised them. But this Friday morning, we'd gotten into a groove and everybody just started laughing while we were training. It was mostly because they were trying to stop daddy from kicking mommy, which, ironically, she was kicking me more than me kicking her. And we just all broke down and giggled our way together with the coach. It was such a fun time. So I'm looking forward to the next training session. And I won't be kicking my wife. All said and done, I believe that 100 years from now, the name Kaheru will still be respected. Not because we've got lots of money, not because we're the most intelligent people in the room, not because we're the most handsome or beautiful in the room, but because we represented the power of family in everything we did.